Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TouchProfit.com and what I'm going to teach you about today is something that is going to be a little hard for some people to hear. I know for me this is something that used to be hard for me because I want to help people so much and it's just my nature and it wasn't always my nature but as the Lord redeemed me and, and renewed me and purified me, it became just part of who I am. And it's this, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 6, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. This is something that's very hard for many professing Christians to get into and to understand and to follow. And I've had to tell people this because they're wasting their time, they're basically doing the proverbial hitting their head against the wall with certain people presenting them certain truths that they are ignoring, they're ridiculing, they're mocking, they're scoffing at them. They're going around telling other people to laugh and mock at them. This is the exact situation that you need to be aware of. That Jesus tells you not to give that which is holy to these people. Not to cast your pearls before these people. Now I'm not calling these people dogs or swine. The point is that for this illustration, these people are going to destroy what you're giving them. They don't respect it. They don't honor it. They don't care about it. And you have to be very careful that you're not just throwing out in the sake of evangelism, throwing out the truth to be mocked and ridiculed and trashed. Now, this is not for you, for your sake. You can handle that. It's no big deal. But the reason is that this is something you hold valuable to yourself, not something common, not something regular, not something average. So you treat it that way. You treat this glorious truth with value and substance. You know, I've talked with people before and they'll literally even say, well, you should just send me all your books and then maybe I'll believe. After they've mocked and ridiculed the truth, you know, because they don't want the truth. They just, there are people out there who exist and this isn't their whole existence, but most of their day is literal real world trolling. They're just wasting time. They're time wasters. They will get you. They want to argue with you. They want to debate, but they don't want to ever come to the truth. They're those people who are ever learning, but never coming to the truth. And they will waste your time. You'll think you're making some progress. You're making some headway. Maybe they're learning. No, they're not. All they're doing is finding out what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, what your reasoning is, and trying to figure out a way to twist it in something different and to argue with you from a different perspective. They don't care about the truth. They have no concern for it at all. And you have to be very careful with how you deliver the truth in the first place. Make sure your attitude's right, your heart is right, your heart is pure. And, and this is the most important part, is that you're led by the Spirit. The Spirit will tell you at times to keep your mouth shut. Where you want to go babbling stuff off, He'll tell you to be quiet. You'll just know within your spirit, I need to be quiet right now. I don't need to say the things I'm thinking to say. This is not some great evangelism moment. I need to shut up. And that can be very hard for people. And this is where it's so important to be led by the Spirit. Because you do not know from outward appearances what's going on in those people's hearts. You might have some indication, whether they're mad or whatever. But you don't really know what's going on, even if they're mad. That could be the perfect time to deliver them the truth. And when they're happy, it could be the worst time to deliver them the truth. Because you don't know what's really going on in their heart and whether the soil has been tilled, whether they are ready to receive the seed of the word. And so this is why you must be led by the Spirit. You know, Jesus said, no one comes unto the Father except the Spirit draws them. Your words and your grasp of the truth is not drawing people to the Lord. And you must understand that. Now, that is not Jesus saying that God's only drawing certain people. It's just that there are certain people who are ready for the word. There are certain people who are now ready to receive. Because other people who God's drawn resist the Spirit. And they can't be drawn anymore. Or at least not at that point. And so I'll get people sometimes that will, they'll 
really get into the truth and really start following the Spirit and being led by the Spirit. And they, of course, take up a vegan lifestyle because everything about their life is love and peace and joy. They don't want to do harm in the world at all. But then they go out and start trying to evangelize other people. Now, this is good in the sense that you want to present people the truth, especially if they don't have the truth. But they fail to be led by the Spirit in this regard. And they are disobeying the Lord's plain command to not give that which is holy unto the dogs and to neither cast your pearls before swine. Because that's exactly what they are doing. These people don't respect the truth. They're not seekers of the truth. They don't care about it in the least. And if they had spent a single second just pondering before the Lord whether they should speak what they're going to speak, they would have the leading of the Spirit to be quiet. And if you're a person like me, and you can just talk, 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 and you have a bunch of information, you're constantly learning, there's always something to talk about, this is where it's so important that you be led by the Spirit. Because you could talk people in where you're intending good, and you're trying to give them the truth, and you're doing it from a loving heart, no doubt, but you cause their heart to be hardened even more because they're not ready to receive. They've been resisting the Spirit, and they're not ready to receive. So they're going to scoff. They're going to mock. Now, they may even do this before you. They may just listen to you, humor you a little bit, and then they're going and scoffing and mocking you behind your back. Now, as I said, that doesn't matter. Who cares about that? But the problem is, you've made it harder for them to receive the truth. Not easier, harder. Because their heart has become more hardened from the truth. And it's one of those things where you've given them more knowledge so they can have greater judgment against them. Because now they know even more of the truth that they are resisting and rejecting. This does not mean you keep people ignorant. But what I have to keep going back to is you must be led by the Spirit. What is He leading you to do? Is He leading you to be quiet? Is He leading you to talk a lot? That's fine. He'll fill your mouth with the words to speak and give you the wisdom to say the right things to those people who are ready. But maybe they're not ready, and maybe you just need to not say anything. Maybe you just need to listen to these people. Maybe they just need someone to listen to them, and then you can end it with a nice, truthful statement that sows that seed of the word into their heart. And then there's the perfect time to receive the word. But this depends on each individual. And like I said, you can't see their hearts. So the outward appearances when they seem open and receptive might be the time when they're the least open and receptive. It's a matter of the heart and it's a matter of the spirit leading you because he knows their hearts. He could tell you what's going on and he can lead you into all truth. And he will lead you into all truth if you're willing to receive that wisdom. So my friend, be very careful about giving the truth out, about dispensing it like it's some common thing. It's valuable. It's holy. It is not something you just give to the masses who are unwilling to receive it and who might be hardened in their sins against it because of their resistant heart right now. So be very wise in this regard. Be led by the Spirit and speak when the Spirit leads you to speak the very words that He leads you to speak. And my friend, to wrap this up, this applies to everything. In business, you'll have this, where you need to be quiet sometimes. And sometimes you need to speak. I've known people who've wrecked business deals because they talk themselves out of the deal. Or they start getting into conversations that have no place in the business, no one's wanting to hear, and they literally talk themselves out of a deal. So please, my friend, be wise in your words. You know, the scripture talks about in much speaking, there wanteth not sin. You'd be better off speaking less and being very careful and, and guarding of the precious truth that you know, that which is holy, than just throwing it out to everybody. And this will apply to every area of your life. When you speak, Make sure you speak as the oracles of God. Make sure your words are valuable and make sure they are spoken to the right people at the right times. 
And the only way you can do that is by being led by the Spirit. And even in your business, where it's not even ministry related, so to speak, even though your business is ministry, because everything you do is you're doing it unto the Lord, even if it's business. But even in that, let the Lord lead you. Let the Spirit guide you to speak the right words. Let Him guide you when to not speak at all. I've had business dealings where I just am praying in my mind, Father, what should I do? And the Spirit just leads me to be quiet, not even say anything. So people are saying stuff, and I'm not responding. And I'm not being rude. It's not like that kind of thing. But they just keep on talking and talking and talking. And they talk themselves into the best deal for both of us. Where before they were resistant, but they talked it through. And my being quiet and letting them come to the conclusion on their own worked out in both of our best interests. When at first they were against themselves. They didn't see the value in the deal. Well, they talked themselves into seeing the value. And so this is why it's so important. You must be led by the Spirit. And you must be guided to use the words that He gives you. He'll give you, fill your mouth. where You don't have to think beforehand. You don't have to premeditate. He'll give you the words to speak. And it'll be a blessing for you in all areas of your life. So my friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.